So I thought I'd do this video. It's been um, it's been a long time, um, and I was going to call it uh, UFOs. What the New York Times dare not say or isn't telling you, uh, and there's some of the things that I wanted to disclose about this, as it's quite a quite a topical um, issue. I've been a I've been in contact and had contact experiences with UFOs for the past uh, 40 years now. In that 40 years, I've learned a lot. I've seen a lot. And, and this has culminated in me writing a book called I Alien, The Secret UFO Chronicles. And that's all about real operations involving UFOs that are beyond the rules of time as we would know it. What started out as like a, an MK Ultra mind invasive operation snowballed, literally snowballed into an operation of disclosure and communication across a network that has even yet to be created. And that's what the book is about. Some people will think it's a work of fiction, and other people will think uh, that it's a work of creative genius, and other people might, you know, it, it, that's the thing with it. It's tricky to write but it's the story of my life and if you imagine i'll just give you a found a, a backdrop before we get into this when i was age 10 um i was walking down the street with a pram and on that pram it was full of scrap uh because we were living in poor housing accommodation we um we had an outside toilet we didn't have any bath we didn't have any heating i'm 10 years of age this is 1980 and i look unclean and i'm heading down the street with this pram to the scrap metal merchants and people used to shout uh, obscenities at me as I'm walking down that street. Uh, and I'm trying to get money for me mum and dad because they're, they're broke. Uh, and I walked into the scrap metal merchants. The scrap man went berserk, but his wife, very kind of her, told me to leave the scrap there. And she gave me some food, like some bread and soup and stuff like that, to take home to me mum and dad. They were very poor. We were, we were a poor family. Uh, and you kind of like being abused as well. Um, there was abuse at school. There was a lot of bullying. There was multiple abuses going on uh, in my life uh, by a family member that wasn't nice. And this sets the backdrop to what I got involved with, with the UFO phenomena. So, so you go from one extreme to the other. I ended up looking after my mother, who had dementia. I looked at part of that was she had quite an unpleasant medical condition. And for a son to do it on his own, because we couldn't quite get the assistance we needed to cope with this medical condition that she had, uh, it certainly earns your green beret in more ways than one. So, at the moment, what we see in the in the uh, New York Times is the situation to do with UFOs, and we see it we see it coming out here that the the Navy have seen UFOs. We've filmed UFOs. We we're not sure what they are, and there's probably a, a boring explanation from them, and that is bullshit. The bit where there's a boring explanation about them is is kind of like pushing it as far as I'm concerned. And I get the impression that you are being lied to and you're not being told the truth. And I wanted to disclose one thing um, about this that they're not telling you, that I feel that we, we can disclose quite safely. I say that because they're running something known as controlled narrative regarding UFOs. And believe it or not, uh, this may sound odd, um, because of my interaction with UFOs, I come under this bizarre controlled narrative banner as well. Not theirs, my own. I have to be careful what I say. There's been a couple of incidents these past three weeks that I, I can't quite talk about in the way I would like because of safety reasons. It goes to the heart of the UFO cover-up, you see. Uh, there is a cover-up. There's a, It's a big one, quite a, quite a nefarious one as well. And I'd like to explain in kindergarten terms um, how what that's about. I, I, by the way, I'm not insulting you. I'm trying to get something over that is vastly complex in a simple way. I, I hope you would understand that. Now, the thing is with this uh, with this UFO situation that is going on is one of the things that we note is that the Navy, um, and I'll come out, come out in support of them unusually, but they need a bit of support. The US Navy has indicated that they're dealing with UAP, these UFOs. Uh, they don't quite know what they are. They do but they're not telling you. They do know what they are. Um, but they're saying that they don't. And obviously the Nimitz aircraft uh, carrier thing where the, where the, the, the aircraft carrier is, uh, as in, uh, the, the, sorry, the jet, the F-16, uh, has engaged one of these Tic Tac UFOs. A few weeks ago I had one of them, I filmed one of them. So the big, the big kicker about all this is that the Navy say, well, we don't know what they are. Uh, there could be a boring explanation while knowing quite the opposite and this is what it is and i'm going to disclose it to you the bit that they're not saying there is in our oceans life and they are using our oceans as bases 
and they come from other universes and come into our oceans and use our oceans as well as bases. So when the Navy turn up on scene with their Nimitz aircraft carrier, their battle groups, their nuked, that's going to alarm them. That is going to alarm the, we'll call them the Maritime Extraterrestrial Group. Very similar to the film The Abyss. Very similar indeed. And that forms, that research and that observation that they're doing forms a classified project. Similarly, the stuff I'm involved with, to do with uh, UFOs flying over me, my communication with them, could also form some sort of secretive project, which it did and has. But they're not telling me the full story on that either. And then we've got this third project going on that they don't like talking about at all. And that's where therein lays the rub. What you've got in terms of the situation with UFOs at the moment, as I've always said this, is you've got a cold war going on. And if you can imagine, and I've said I've said this in public time and time again, this is this is what you won't see in the New York Times. Just imagine that, um, let us say, on the American government's doorstep, um, Bob and his used car salesman from Planet Zog turn up, and they say, "Hello, uh, hello, uh, Mister Classified U.S. Guy. We've got this UFO here. It uh, it works like a dream. It will revolutionise your technology. Um, we'd like we like you to have it." Uh, and use it free of charge, and we're going to move in the house down the road, but just don't look at what we're doing if you don't mind. And so Admiral Evans turns up from the other part of the Navy, so we've got two navies now, one in a classification, and one Group A is not telling Group B what is going on. So let us say Admiral Evans turns up from Navy Group B and says, we understand, we have, we've heard rumours that you have bought a used UFO and they've moved in down the street and you, you're ignoring this and we'd like to know what's going on. And they will turn round to Admiral Evans and say, I'm sorry, Admiral, we can't tell you. We can't tell you anything of what is going on. And in a huff, Admiral Evans would walk away from that in a right huff because he can't understand what's going on because he's been denied the information under USAP, Unacknowledged Special Access Projects. So you now have two elements of the military. One hand, left hand does not know what the right hand's doing, and that would lead to an information conflict. The visitors who've moved into the house down the road, and this sums it up so eloquently, are now playing loud music, right? Just go with it. They're playing loud music, and it's kind of like a nuisance. And uh, somebody's saying to them, the humans are saying, can you turn the music down? Can you just turn it down? And no, no, they're not going to turn it down. Next minute you know, dear old Admiral Evans and his task force group out there in the ocean trying to fathom out what's going on with these UFOs, suddenly get a visit from them, and these people, they, they turn up and they say, hello, Admiral Evans, yes, we can hear their music. It's quite a nuisance, actually. Perhaps you might consider looking at what we've got for sale. We've got the latest software and technology data transfer systems that could revolutionise your technology. But hey-ho, you bought a US, uh, used UFO from those car salesmen and are a bit dodgy. Perhaps you might want to have a chat with us. And in simple terms, in simple terms, that is what's going on. That is, that is how it's going now. But they're not going to tell you that. And the second thing that's quite interesting, and this I find, this is what I've discovered during the course of 40 years in dealing with all this, is that the people, explaining this very simply, the people playing loud music that sold the UFO, now other people can hear them, and will say that the other ETs have turned up, and they've told them to play them, stop playing the music, please, it's making a row, and they've taken no notice. We'll take this a stage further, and I'm explaining it in very simple terms. The group that are playing the loud music will class them as alien Russia, and the group that's turned up on the doorstep that's saying we have technology that can help you will class them as alien NATO. Now we have a bit of a standoff going on because we have uh, alien Russia doing its own thing and alien NATO turning up on the doorstep outside of the controlled narrative. That's the thing. So I am now outside of control narrative, and I'm having a conversation with them, and, and it's running independently from anything else. That's not liked. That's not good. So what you now have is an alien Cold War. You have alien Russia and alien NATO, and probably, we'll say, the government in question right in the middle of it. 
few weeks ago I filmed one of these Tic Tac UFOs. It flew directly over me. Over the years I've had communication with them. I'm not going to promote myself uh, and, and you know as if I'm a crank or anything like that. It happened. It's in my book. What happened, happened. Uh, but basically they're maritime ETs. And they came in directly over me uh, about two weeks ago over the Marine Lake in Southport. I'm expecting to film them again. The thing with that situation is that it flew over me. Then ten minutes later, a small dot of light UFO went chasing after it. Well, that's because Alien Group B, Alien NATO, has turned up in the skies, has flown over me, and Alien Group Russia doesn't like that at all. And so you've got two UFOs in conflict with each other in the skies above us. There's actually a Cold War going on, and that's the bit that they can't really come out with. They can't really tell you this. And in fairness to the Navy, uh, in dealing with all this, there is this school of thinking from Dr. Stephen Greer, who I am a fan of, that all aliens are peaceful. Um, and unfortunately, it's not quite the case. They're not all peaceful. They just are not. Um, some of the uh, And this forms this kind of alien Russia, alien NATO theme. Um, and the thing is, is that a Navy force, a military force, and, and in my book, the Navy are key players in all this, and they are key players. Uh, they cannot go around with the with their head in the clouds and their eyes closed. They just can't. They, they have to have a big stick walk in peace, but with a big stick behind them because they need to have their eyes and ears wide open because it's an uncertain universe. Um, two weeks ago, I, I had an incident in here where I was having a, a visualisation of something to do with UFOs and artificial intelligence. I won't go any further into that. But it was a very interesting visualisation. It was so real. Um, I'm wondering whether it was my imagination or it was just so real what was going on. Um, but basically that provoked a reaction from another party who also is running these classified programmes that they don't want people to know about. And I had quite a, a job on with one of these, uh, shall we call them entities? I think we'll call them entities. In the 1950s and 1960s under an agency called the Collins Elite uh, which was a specialist Christian agency who indicated, who understood quite clearly that there's an element to the UFO phenomenon that is demonic. Actually, it's free triad. So you've got, it's like a free triad thing. So you've got the UFOs that pose a threat. Now, according to the narrative in the New York Times, UFOs pose a threat. No, that's the bit that they've got wrong. Or rather, that might be the bit they're not telling you. It suits it suits it. It suits the agenda for it to be a threat, for it to be warlike. That's not quite correct at all. What you've got is a situation where one element of the UFO phenomena warns governments that part of it, part of its elements, part of its people, I don't know, how can you put it into words? It warns that other UFOs are hostile. Do you get me? So you have got a clear division. So by irony, it's UFOs that warn other UFOs are hostile. You don't need a human narrative to tell you that they're saying so. The other thing as well is Project Blue Beam and the fake alien invasion. That would be very hard to pull off, a fake alien invasion, because some of these star nations have their own judiciary and have their own laws, and they watch other groups. That would be very tricky, for various reasons, to pull off. What is facing, I think, America and the US government at the moment with the UFO phenomenon is the gateway to better technology especially data transference and software technologies from them. It's a big, wide business world out there for America. And I think, you know, in Colonel Corso's book, I think it was the one he wrote after, the day after Roswell, he wrote another one. And one of these ETs, as I understand, was speaking to him, saying that it's a nice future if you can handle it. If you can handle our technology, it will be a nice future for you. So I wonder whether we'll move away from this threat narrative and a better understanding of, of what is going on out there. Um, so far, I've had uh, elements, small minority incidents, minor incidents of uh, UFOs and those behind them being unfriendly. But the majority of them are just jolly decent. The majority of them are peaceful. So the question is, where do we stand now with this? Where's it all going to go, I think? And that, that is the question. My contact experiences are, are thundering on. And as I say, the incident that happened to me two weeks ago is shocking. It's just absolutely shocking, and I can't even articulate it into words. I can't find the words, viewers, to tell you what happened to me. But I saw the engine. I saw the driving engine behind this narrative, and I'm not impressed. I, I really aren't impressed, considering that men 
um, gave their lives on the beaches of Omaha, Juno and sword to defend against tyranny, it would appear that this tyranny has walked through the back door. And I think elements, elements of whatever they are, majestic or whatever you want to call them, should hang their heads in shame over what they've done. Because it's been, it's quite unpleasant what is going on behind the scenes. Everybody knocks Dr. Stephen Greer, but he's, he's on the money. He's on the money when it comes to unacknowledged special access projects, corruption, and peaceful extraterrestrial communication. The two are there, the two are present and the real. It's not all threat, threat, threat. They'd like you to think it is for very nefarious reasons. Those reasons absolutely disgust me, actually, frankly. And so there you go. Um, I hope I've clarified somewhat what is uh, what is going on. Uh, it's just a shame that for my own safety, there's some of it I just, I just can't talk about. And it's shocking. Um, it really is. All right, so my book, I, Alien, The Secret UFO Chronicles, will be hopefully out in September. It's one hell of a read. It's very exciting. All sorts of images and artwork. It tells my uh, my life story about the uh, about what what I've gone through with these UFOs and communication with them. Thank you very much for listening.